Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to be going over the specimen paper for the Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level at Excel, um, which uh, first was introduced for the first exam. It was supposed to be in June 2020 for this particular paper, but um, because of COVID, it took place in October 2020. But this is the specimen paper which was released before the exam for. Uh, practice purposes and I'm going to go through this paper now and um, there's some differences between this and the old C4 uh, the main one being the introduction of the topic called proof uh, which uh, that's the, really the main difference and also some of the di some of the integration that used to be in this particular um, um, in, in, in the old C4 is now being moved to C3 um, apart from that, there's not much of a difference really from the P4 now and the old C4. Okay, so let's get straight ahead, answer the first question. It's about binomial theorem, um, very similar to the old P4 type of questions, uh, C4 sorry, type of questions. And they told us to expand this um, bracket up to and including the term in x cubed, fully simplifying each term. Okay, so they've got this little part next to it which says the modulus of x is less than 8 over 3 and for this particular question we don't really need to know what that means but we do we do within the syllabus need to know what that means and why it's there because sometimes they might ask you to expand this and they might say state the value the range of values of x for which this expansion is valid and that's what exactly what they've done here this is this tells us the range of values of x for which the expansion here would be valid so that's um, something I'll explain at the end of the question why it's this and what it actually means now so first of all let's just go ahead and just expand this um, this thing now when you expand something like this we have to first write it in index form and we should know from our um, laws of indices that a to the power of a fractional power is something which you can write in third form where the numerator is the power okay and the denominator is the root so this means the nth root of a to the power of m so if you think about this if you want to write this in in you know reverse and in index form take it away from third form into index form the two would be the m the power and the three would be the root so what we can do is we can say that the cube root of 8 minus 3x can be rewritten as 8 minus 3x to the power of 2 thirds. Okay, so 8 minus 3x squared, sorry, is equal to 8 minus 3x to the power of 2 thirds. And that's using this law of indices. Okay, so that's one of the marks for this question by, you know, doing that. Now, one of the things we need to realize is in P2, we were, we were used to using what's called the NCR button on a calculator in order to expand something like this. And we would have like a bracket, then another bracket, then another bracket. And this bracket would be for NCR. So whatever power it was, you'd put on the top and then zero, then, that, then one, then two, then three, as far as you need to go. And you'd put the first term in here, raise it to, say, the lowest power, and then the, the, or the, you'd raise it to the, the highest power, and then you'd put the next term in here including the sign and you raise it to the um, the lowest power and you'd kind of continue like that that's how we did it in p2 but this doesn't apply now because um, the ncr button will only work for positive integer powers okay so if the power is a, a fraction it's non-integer or if it's negative then the ncr button won't work so we have to do this using what's called the binomial expansion and the binomial expansion is something that you'll find under p2 in the formula book and uh, something that is quite simple really but basically if you have something in the form 1 plus x to the power of n that gives you 1 plus n x plus and then it follows this pattern n times n minus 1 now n remember is a power here n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, which means 2 times 1, times x squared, plus you have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial, which means 3 times 2 times 1, 
x cubed plus and you continue in the same pattern if you need to you'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 brackets x to the power 4 over 4 factorial and so on that's how it would continue okay so for us to be able to use this particular form here we have to rewrite this such that it has a 1 at the beginning so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this I'm going to take out the 8 from this bracket that gives me a 1 here but that means I have to also modify this so I end up with minus 3 when I multiply 8 by it so basically I have to divide it by 3 so I've, but I've divided by 8 sorry so I have minus 3 over 8 x okay and all of this has to be raised to the power of 2 thirds okay so that's like 8 if I multiply I got 8 minus 3 over 8 times 8 which is minus 3x to the power of 2 thirds so these two are exactly the same Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my laws of indices that I know also. That if I have two numbers multiplied together and I raise them to the same power, okay, if they're in, in the, in, like both as a product raised to one, one power, I can write them as separate products. So a to the power of m times b to the power of m, they're exactly the same. So similarly for this, I can say 8 to the power of 2 thirds. So I can say 8 to the power of 2 thirds times 1 minus 3 over 8 x to the power of 2 thirds now 8 to the power of 2 thirds as we've seen from here okay 8 to the power of 2 thirds means basically the cube root of 8 squared 8 to the power of 2 thirds actually means the cube root i'll just write it up here 8 to the power of 2 thirds means the cube root of 8 squared and the cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. So I can rewrite this as 4, and I have 1 minus 3 over 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Now I have this in the form that I need for me to be able to expand it. So I'm just going to now uh, take this form and use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this particular formula here to expand this. So I've got my 4, that's separate. I'll write that separately. They're going to have 1 plus nx, or so 1 plus n. Now n is the power, which is 2 thirds, and x is the term in this position here, including its sign. So here, instead of the x here, you have minus 3 over 8x. Sorry, I forgot the x there. Okay, 3 over 8x. Don't forget the x. I did that. So that's 2 thirds times negative 3 over 8 x okay that's n x so the x here doesn't mean just an x it means whatever term is in this place here so in here we have the term 3 minus 3 over 8 x instead of the x okay n times n minus 1 so i'm going to have plus 2 thirds times n minus 1 now 2 thirds minus 1 okay 2 thirds minus 1 is 2 thirds minus 3 over 3 which is minus a third so that's n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, so I'll put 2, times x squared, which is minus 3 over 8x, and that whole bracket, that, that part is squared. Okay, then I have plus. Then I have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So n, which is 2 thirds, times n minus 1, which is, as we said, minus 1 third. Then I've got to take away another one from this. That's minus 1 third minus 3 over 3, which is minus 4 over 3, over 3 factorial, which is going to be 3 times 2. 3 times 2 times 1. I'll just write it out in full. It doesn't make any difference with the 1 there anyway. Then I have to multiply that by minus 3 over 8 x cubed. Okay, minus 3 over 8 x cubed. So there we have... Um, uh, so th that's probably going to be uh, probably a mark for, for writing this as a 4 and probably another mark for writing this out in its unsimplified form. Okay, we have to only go up to x cubed, so I'm going to stop there. Okay, now it tells us to, uh, well, now we have to basically simplify this as much as possible. So we can put 4 times, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you could put this in your calculator, but I'll just do it mentally for most of it anyway so we can see that the through that you're going to have a plus times a minus which is a minus so the whole thing is a minus the three and the three cancel and you're left with two over eight which is a quarter x 
okay, minus a quarter x. And here you're going to have negative times, this is going to become positive, you're going to square the minus sign, it's going to be positive times negative, so the whole thing is negative. Then I'm going to have, that's going to be 2 uh, over, uh, well, the 2 will cancel with this 2, actually. So that will cancel, you'll end up with uh, 1 over 9, okay, because the 2 will cancel with the 2 there. And you have 3 times 2, which is 9. And here you're going to have uh, the 3 squared, which is going to be 9, over 8 squared, which is 64. And that's going to be x squared. And then I'm going to have a minus times a minus, which is a plus, times a negative cubed is negative, so the whole thing will be negative. Um, I'm going to have 2 times 4, which is 8 on the numerator. And on the denominator, I have 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27 times another 3, which is 81 times 2, which is 162. So it's 8 over 162. And I'm going to have, this is going to be, I've already took, taken care of the minus and left it out there. So that's going to be 3 cubed, which is... 27x cubed over 8 cubed. Okay, I'm going to have to work out what that is. 8 cubed, 64. Okay, 8 cubed. Which gives us 512. That's over 512. Uh, plus dot, dot, dot. We stop there. Okay, so now we have to simplify this. So you're going to have, let me simplify before I expand with the 4. So minus 1 minus a quarter x. The 9 cancels with the 9, so you're left with minus 1 over 64x squared. I'm going to have, let me just stick this all in my calculator. I'll have 8 over 162 multiplied by 27 over 512. That gives me 1 over 384, um, so that's minus... 1 over 384x cubed, okay, and that's going to now simplify. So we can say that our original question, which was 8 minus 3x, um, 8 minus 3x squared uh, under the cube root is going to be the same as 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 4 times a quarter, which is 1, so it's minus x, and 4 times 1 over 64 is 1 over 16, so minus 1 over 16x squared, and 4 divided by 384. Let me just multiply this by 4 here, and that will give me 1 over 96, so minus 1 over 96x cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. And there we have it. We have answered the question. This is the answer and we've expanded this up to and including the term in x cubed for fully simplifying each term. Okay, so that's worth five marks. And now, um, as I mentioned, we don't actually have to understand what this means in this particular question because they didn't ask us about it. Okay, uh, sometimes they might give you this question without showing this and say, um, you know, uh, give the... The, the range of values for of x for which this expansion would be valid. Okay, so then you'd have to understand what this means. Basically, these expansions where you have negative and integer powers, okay, where the value of n is either a, a, a fraction or a negative integer, either of them, they are called infinite expansions. Okay, and the reason being is because the fact of this um, formula here if n is a positive integer, for example, if n is 3, you'll have 1 plus 3 times x plus, then you'll have um, 3 times 2 times x squared over 2, then you have 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed, then you have 3 times 2 times 1 times 0 over 4 factorial times x to the power 4, you'll end up with a 0 there. And every other term after that will have that zero in it. So if you try to find the fifth term, you're going to have three times two times one times zero times minus one times minus two and so on. So basically, you, you'll end up with everything else have that zero, which will cause the whole term to disappear. So it will be finite. It will stop at a certain point. And it, it will stop at the same number as where the power is. It's called a finite expansion. Okay, But these powers here, if they're negative power or fractional powers, you're going to skip zero so if it's a negative power for example if n is minus two 
you're going to have 1 plus minus 2 times x. And then you have minus 2 times minus 3 times x squared. And then you have minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4 times minus 5 times minus 6. You'll never get to 0. So this expansion will go on forever and ever. It's an infinite expansion. Similarly, when you have a fraction like we see here, you're going to skip 0. So you, even though you're starting with a positive number, you have 2 thirds, and then you take away 1, you get minus a third. Take another 1, you get minus 4 over 3. So you're always multiplying by something which is not a 0. You will never multiply by the zero. So these are also finite, uh, sorry, infinite expansions. They can continue on forever. And that's the reason why, you know, we have to, um, you know, be careful about what value of um, x goes into here. So basically, whatever goes into this bracket here, this bracket here, the value of x that goes into the, into the bracket here, Whatever term goes into that bracket, which is this term, it's minus 3 over 8x, basically, in this particular question, that its magnitude must always be less than 1. Otherwise, if it, for example, if the magnitude of this was, say, 2, something bigger than 1, or even 1 in itself, in fact, basically every term is going to keep increasing and increasing and increasing in size as you go along. All right? So if you, for example, if you put 2 and square it, you're going to get 4. Cube, you're going to get 8. Raise it to the power of 4, you're going to get 16. To the power of 5, you're going to get 32. To the power of 10, you're going to get 1,024. You're going to have to keep adding bigger and bigger and bigger numbers or, or even subtracting them, okay? And you'll end up, you know, getting something which will keep changing in value. And you can't say that this is equal to this stopped at a certain point. Okay, you, you won't be able to say that this is, is like approximately the same as this. Okay, because uh, the thing that you put into here is so, you know, it's going to end up getting so big, it will make a huge difference to the number. But if its magnitude is less than one, like, for example, a half, as you raise numbers which are less than one to higher and higher powers, their magnitude gets very small. So, like, if I raise a half to the power of 10, for example, you're going to get one over 1,024, which is a very small number, which will only affect uh, the value of, an, you, know, um, you know, something like in the maybe the fifth, sixth, decimal place of the number. So if the magnitude of this number, minus 3 over 8x in this particular case, if its magnitude, if the magnitude of minus 3 over 8x is less than 1, then what happens is this will be a valid expansion. Then I can say that this is going to give me something, uh, you know, the same as this, as long as this, is, uh, this condition is fulfilled. But we don't normally write it like this. We write it in terms of x. So what we've got to do is, first of all, the magnitude of something means we just consider the positive. Okay, so that, that gets rid of the minus sign. And this is the same as saying 3 over 8 times the modulus of x is less than 1. And if I rewrite, rewrite that uh, by making the modulus of x a subject, I'm, I have to multiply by 8 and divide by 3 to get rid of 3, 8. So multiply by 8 over 3, so I have the modulus of x is less than 8 over 3. And that is a condition for this to be a valid expansion. So the last point I mentioned is not needed in this question, in this particular question, but it's something that is within the syllabus for us to have to understand. And sometimes they do tell us uh, to, they, they'll say, uh, you know, um, give the va range of values of x for which this is, this is a valid expansion. And you'd have to work that out yourself. And that's... The way to do it is just basically whatever term that you put in this bracket, wherever your x is in your formula when you've rearranged it, wherever your x is in this formula, the modulus of that thing has to be less than 1. So the modulus of 3 over 8x has to be less than 1. Okay, of course, if there's a minus sign with the modulus, you can uh, get rid of the minus sign. You don't need it, okay? So we're going to write that as a modulus of 3 over 8x is less than 1. So that means the modulus of x is less than 8 over 3. Okay, so that's how we deal with such questions. Um, other questions which are related to um, the binomial expansion can be found in the playlist that you'll find in this position somewhere over here. Binomial expansion of P4, by the way. Um, and the other questions from this paper you'll find in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this position here. Around here should appear a icon for you to be able to subscribe to the channel if you so wish. And on the top of the page will be a link to another P4 paper 
that might interest you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.